Hey guys, Better Outdoorsman here, and today <laughs> what we're going to talk about is the advantages of the Easy V Sight for aging archers, for those who are starting to see the effects of presbyopia, or, you know, simplest terms, old eyes. You're having trouble focusing on things that are closer, especially when you get to the point where if you hold a book out like this, you still can't read it. That's when you're going to have trouble seeing your bow pens. The average archer is going to use a sight like this. This is a three pen. Um, many times it'll be a five pen. So 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. Um, a three pen for, will be for guys that don't typically take shots over 40 yards, obviously. And for um, beginning archers, uh, a lot of ready to hunt kits will come with. Hmm, lights are flickering. Will come with a three pin sight like this. That is where this came from. This. Connect systems. Um, it's all aluminum. Really nice construction. Not a bad sight. Uh, but it came with a ready to hunt package that I bought. What is the deal with the lighting? I, I apologize for that. The lights really are flickering. So I'm not really sure why I'm seeing the lights and darks on here. Um, although, hang on. I might. No? Anyway, but, like right now, that doesn't look too bad. But if I get out, um, and it's really bright, or in low light, it doesn't make sense it'd be both, but, um, I really have trouble seeing those pins. These are better than most, or than a lot, but I have trouble seeing the pins. Um, I'm 40 years old, I'm also farsighted. Which makes it harder to see things up close anyway. You notice most of the time I'm wearing these glasses. These are reading glasses. I don't wear them all the time. But I wear them doing these videos a lot. Because I'm dealing with stuff up close. It makes it a lot easier for me to see. Um, also, I've got my glasses on. I can see these pins. Okay. I mentioned that in my other video. But uh, even out here, without my glasses, they're fuzzy. So, let's take a look. I've just got a, an insert that uh, came with my Easy V site. They, came, they come with a bunch of inserts. There's your Easy V site. This is the pin site side. You can see it's got black notches. Um, the bottom two notches, this is a pretty fast one. This is can't read it, but this is a pretty fast speed, actually. Uh, so it's got a lot of pins, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. And then there's two more down here that aren't marked, but they're on there. I'm obviously not the one I'm going to shoot, if you're familiar with my setups, what I've talked about. But it's really simple. Why is it good for aging archers? Why is it good for guys that have trouble seeing things close? And close, you know, arm's length or further, why is it good for those guys, like me? Oh, okay. Something. Hmm. Something's affecting the light. I think I know what it is. I'm casting a shadow on the... Yeah, okay, that's what it is. I'm casting a shadow on the camera and it's adjusting the light. That makes sense now. But why is this good? Because I don't have to look at a pen. I don't have to, to pinpoint a pen. Let me get it where you can see the pins. 
I just pinpoint that and cover my target. All I have to do is center my target in this guy. It doesn't matter if this is blurry, because that's not what I'm focusing on. I'm focusing on what's in here, the target. And it's also easy because you just take, say the point of my finger is the vital zone. You just cradle it and shoot. Makes it simple too. You know, not a not a precision target style sight by any stretch. Although you can get pretty tight grips with this. I was shooting out to 40 yards. I was hitting my bullseye like this very consistently. At 50, my my um my groups did open up to, you know, probably like that. Which isn't isn't horrible, isn't great, but I haven't shot fifty yards in at least four or five years, maybe maybe longer. Consistently shot fifty yards. So for me, it it just made it real easy. Um, I really like it actually. It's it's a really good sight. It's good for aging eyes. Again, let's get an idea of the sight picture. You're looking through here. Here's your vital zone. Get it. You just cradle it. You're at your right range. You shoot. If you wanted to use this, um, and Aaron from EZV mentions this, if you wanted to shoot five spot um, for a 300 round or something like that, as long as they allow this sight, just sight in to where you're cradling that circle like this. And your target is unobstructed. This would this work guys for guys with young eyes that can see the pins. Your target's unobstructed at that point. You don't have to worry about it. Um, I mentioned that for less, you know, last year I wore my reading glasses while hunting so that I could see my pins clearly. And, and that did help considerably. Also, by putting some tape, I used a different site last year, but putting some tape over these fiber optic here and just allowing the pin itself to gather the light, that helped too. But, the reading glasses, I don't wear them all the time. I typically have them with me at any given time, but many times I've been in the blind my glasses get fogged up. What happens? You take them off. Let me tell you a story. Um, about 10, about 11 years ago, I'm deer hunting with a buddy of mine. We're in a double bull blind. It is the first frost of the year. and I, It was in October. <laughs> um, I'm going to say... Around the last week of October, the deer were, were starting the pre-rut pretty good. They were chasing a little bit. You were starting to see a lot of rubs and scrapes, things like that. Um, I'm sitting in the blind. We initially set it up because there were turkeys roosted. Not too far away, and we are hoping to call them in. That didn't happen. Some does come into the field, and they get close. They're about... 15 20 yards from the stand at any given time for about 15 20 minutes they're just wandering around in there within we're well within range the reason we didn't shoot is because there's a buck at 50 about a 140 inch 10 point buck um at 50 and we we're hoping he'd come in a little further a little closer he never did but what happened i'm sitting in the blind my glasses had fogged up so I took them off. I laid them down. I'm farsighted, so I can see, okay, I can see 20-20 on our eye chart without my glasses. So I can see fine. I can shoot if I have to. At this point, I'm not having the, the big trouble that I am now with the cloudy pins and things like that. I can shoot without my pins. They're a little fuzzy, but no problem. The deer starts to move. I get into position where I can draw. I get up like this. I raise up 
I move my knee forward. And you can guess what happens. Crunch. There's my glasses. So if I relied on my glasses to have a clear sight picture, what happens if I break them? My hunt's over. If I don't have to wear them in the first place, now some people have to wear glasses at all times. They're going to be on your face. You don't have to worry about it. You, you've probably come up with solutions to keep them from fogging up as well. Um, or you're probably just going to wipe them off, warm them up inside your shirt or so, whatever it takes, put them back on. You're going to be more careful if you don't have to wear them all the time. Me, not having to wear them all the time, I, I tend to put them down when I'm doing things at distance, and they occasionally get broke. So that's a reason I didn't want to have to rely on them. Because today, if that had happened, and I was using pen sights, and I had to have that to be able to see my pens, my hunt would have been over. I could have still run the camera for him. He had his bow. And that, and that had been fine. But my hunt, as far as me shooting, would have been over. So I've been looking for a solution to help me with my eyes. This is what I found. I found um, there's a few companies that make LED style sites. There's there's one, um, maybe it's Burris, makes a, a red dot type site, but it's six, eight hundred bucks. Uh, it probably would work great. You shoot at a couple different ranges and it calibrates itself and it's ready to go. I mean, probably would work awesome. But I really didn't want to spend that kind of money. And the LED style sights, they look like a pin sight, but they've got a screen here and they just cast a dot. Still a few hundred bucks. I don't want to spend that. These are 125, 150. Sorry, the Easy V, not this. This is a fairly inexpensive site. It's a 50, 60 dollar site. The Easy V that I have here, really rugged site. All aluminum construction except for the V itself and the glass uh, level. 125, 150, some, somewhere around there. Not a very expensive site. Good site. Um, very rugged. If you drop it, are you going to knock? Are you going to knock it out of alignment? Probably. Are you going to break it or bend it? Probably not. If you've been hunting as long as I have, you probably remember the old ready to hunt packages, like from Bear. Uh, my old bear whitetail too. The black bears at the time had the same thing that had the uh, just a flat plate for the pins and had the brass pins stuck in them and nothing protected them. So basically, other than being brass pins, it looks something like this without this piece. They just hung out there. And if you hunted with them long enough, you can probably remember a time where you bumped into something or dropped something. And you went to shoot and one of your pins was like this. It was bent. Or it rattled loose and fell off. I had that happen. <laughs> um, you know, they weren't the... They were fairly rugged for the day. But they weren't the most rugged sights in the world. This thing, you may knock it out of alignment. You bump it, you need to shoot it. But you can also put... Um, I recommend getting some fingernail pol polish of a bright color. And putting some dots in spots for witness marks so you can see if it's moved windage or elevation wise just like sealing wax type thing and if there's a crack in it you know that your site has a has been adjusted a little bit has been moved a little bit you need to recite in you could also get it back in pretty close take a little bit of acetone or something clean it up put a new spot on it you're good to go um, you could use a different color, pink, orange, yellow, something like that is really easy to see. And it's easy to see the black underneath if you crack it. So I would recommend that. But that's pretty well it. Um, 
this is just a really rugged, so far reliable and accurate sight that I have enjoyed shooting so far. It's really easy to see the sight picture. You don't have to pay much attention to your level because your eye just naturally levels it up. I mean, if you're like this or even like that, you see it and you just adjust. You see it and you adjust. You see it and you adjust. It makes it simple. I like simple. I like no frills. I don't need beyond parallel. Um, though I have one. I don't need it. I, I got a great deal on that bow used. That's why I shoot it. That's why I shot it. But I don't need all that stuff. I don't need nine inch or you know five and a half inch brace heights or four and a half or whatever. I don't need super speed bows. 350, 360 IBO. It's not for me. I prefer a single cam bow to be honest with you. I didn't find one that I could shoot that I could go and see and shoot. So I went with a twin cam. This is a 305 IBO speed bow. Came with a nice ready to hunt package. Um, a really nice one actually. Had a QAD rest. This sight. I put a ripcord rest on it because I already had that and I like the ripcord. Um, but I'm keeping the QAD as a spare. It'll work fine. Um, it's always good to have a spare of different of, of the same style of things. It doesn't have to be the exact same model. The QAD will be fine. Um, has this nice quiver on it that is just rugged and solid. My arrows, even when even when they come out of here and they slide down a little bit, they don't fall out. You know, I just like rugged and simple. So that's what I got. I mean, you want to go rugged and simple? I made that sling out of paracord, which a lot of guys are doing now. Nothing new. Uh, it's just... It's just a really, really great bow. Um, and that is just a good sight. I, mean, I didn't even think about that. I just saw that and got it to where it's lined up. It does have a level on it. I'll show you that if I can. Hopefully you can see. It does have a level. Uh, aluminum housing, aluminum mounting. It's got threaded holes so you can mount your quiver on it. It's, it's just a really, really rugged, rugged sight. I mean, Lightweight, doesn't weigh any more than, maybe maybe a touch more than this pin sight, not much. I'll keep this as a spare. I mean, worse comes to worse. Something happens to that, I lose a piece of it or something, knock it loose. While I'm waiting for replacement parts, I'll go and sight this in at 20. Actually, it's already sighted in at 20, I'll just put it on. And I'll just move these pins all the way down. And I'll just shoot out to 20, 25 yards. I'll be fine. And with one pin, I can manage. But this, it's not a review of this type of sight. It's just about the advantages of this for aging archers. And, and they go from 200 feet per second all the way up to 380, I think. Which is just phenomenal. Um, in 10 feet per second increments. Something that you're going to want to pay attention to. If you shoot the type of arrows I do. 650. You know. Over 500 for sure. 
but especially if you're over 600 grains, um, your bow may shoot pretty slow. You may not shoot fast enough for one of these inserts, but more than likely, you're going to need to use a faster insert than what you've got. Um, the Ranch Ferry had an article or had a video about a, a lady that she shot around 200 feet per second, but she was shooting a 240 foot per second insert because they just don't lose that much speed. By calculated speed, my bow was shooting around 180 feet per second with a with a uh, online calculator. I don't know what it's actually shooting. I really don't care. But I'm shooting a 200 feet per second insert, and I'm pretty well dead on. You may be even faster shooting 200 feet per second insert, and you're in the 220 range, 230 range, because of how it drops. I was shooting the 200 insert. I may be able to shoot the 210, 220, um, because there's not that much difference until you get out a little further. But I don't really have a need to shoot any further, and I'm shooting out to 50 just fine, which is 40 is probably as far as I'll ever shoot a live animal. Um, I have shot deer out to 50, but I think those days are over for me. But I could do it with this sight if I wanted to. Um, even going out west, I'm not going to shoot 70, 80, 90 yards. It's just... There's too much can go wrong in my opinion, so I'm not going to do that. But if you shoot a faster bow, you know, this one actually can have marked south to 80 yards. 20, 30, 40, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, and then if you mark the other two, 78, or yeah, 70, 80. Some of them will go way out there. Now, they do say that past 60, you need to range it and use it like a pen sight. Because you see, that's pretty parallel past the black marks. That's fine. You can do that. You can put custom marks on it if you want. Maybe you got a bow that just doesn't line up. You won't be able to take advantage of the range finding um, portion of it. I get that. But... <clears throat> flip it around like that where there's no mark you can see through because it's translucent but where there's no marks ranch Ferry mentions this and just put marks with a sharpie or something at the ranges you want and use your laser lots of ways to do this it's just a it's a great sight uh But the big thing is, it's just easy to see. I don't have to worry if this gets fuzzy. I don't have to worry if my peep's fuzzy. I do shoot a peep. A lot of guys don't shoot a peep with this. If you don't like peeps, this may be a good way to go. Um, Troy Fowler does not shoot a peep. He shoots kisser button, nose on the string, anchor point, and then just shoots a sight. And... He shoots out to various ranges. Um, he doesn't have any issues. Lots of guys shoot this without a peep. Because uh, it self-levels. and the thing, it, it, It's a good sight. I'm shooting a peep. Um, I thought that I'd go away from my peep. But since it was already tied in, I figured I'd try it. Probably, honestly, I barely notice it's there. I just look through it. Who cares if the ring's fuzzy? Who cares if this is a little fuzzy as long as I can... Put the vitals in there and man with that unobstructed view it's great it's gonna be good in low light conditions because of your unobstructed view you're gonna be able to see your deer you're gonna be able to, i i have put a pin on a deer you know at 35 40 yards shot and hit a limb that i didn't see because it came out just perfect with my pen and i didn't see it something to think about You'll see your obstructions because your view's open. To me, there's no disadvantages. I really like the sight. I think it's great for aging eyes. Um, as I get older, it's only going to get worse. 
but it's the same reason, you know, I don't shoot notch and V iron sights on rifles anymore, except it may be really close range. I've got to where I don't even shoot them on handguns much. I shoot ghost rings, things like that, because I'm having trouble seeing them. But I shoot peeps, you know, preferably a partridge style front, a nice rear aperture. Great, great setup. Or I shoot a scope. Why well, didn't want to put some kind of scope? It's expensive, whatever, on this bow. May look my range depending on how I did it. I didn't want to do that. So I wanted another option. And I talked to I I I bug him a lot. I email Troy Fowler probably once, twice a week, and I ask him different questions, pick his brain. You know, I talked about and I've been able talked about on the uh, the podcast that we did about not being able to see the pins anymore, things like that. Man, get an easy V. Yeah, well, that's kind of something I want to do. And I talked to him about target panic and things like that. Get an easy V. Finally, I thought, you know what? I guess he's right. I'll get an easy V. I love it. I love it. Will I be able to say that in a year? I think so. But it's a little too early to tell. I'm certainly going to hunt with it this year. Um, you're only talking two months away. I'm going to be doing a lot of practice, getting used to the sight pictures and everything. That's something you're going to need to do. Shoot a couple rounds of 3D, things like that. I mean, at minimum, put some deer sights, deer targets or whatever on your block or your bag target. Set them at different distances, walk around, shoot quarter and away, shoot, shoot different things, you know. Go to 20 yards, back up three steps, shoot. Go to 30 yards, walk three steps forward, shoot. Go to 50, take five steps to the left, two steps forward, shoot. Practice. Get used to your sight picture on the animal you're going to hunt. If you're turkey hunting, use a turkey target. If you're deer hunting, deer target bear, elk, etc. Use something similar. Elk versus deer, you probably get pretty close. Um, bear, things like that. Try with different style targets. Go shoot some 3D rounds. Shoot at the elephants and the and the Tyrannosaurus Rexes and all of that stuff. But you try this, I think you're going to enjoy it. Um, I think you're going to find it really helps if you're like me and getting old and going blind. God bless y'all. We'll catch you next time. Um, like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, and we'll see you in the next video.